Hi, I'm Chart Gal Lori, and I'm part of the Chart Guys community. I've been a trader and technical analyst for the past eight years. Today was an interesting day as we recovered from yesterday's sell-off after this CPI reaction. We had a very negative day with semis leading the way to the downside. Well, today we saw them lead the way to the upside. We had an interesting double bottom in cannabis I'm going to talk about. So let's go look at the charts. Well, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you're well. It's February 14th, 2024, and I'm Chart Gal Lori. Let's take a look at today's market recap video, starting with SPY. You'll notice a little different look to my chart. I want to point out a couple things. I've added the watermark thanks to a member's suggestion saying that I do talk a little fast and it would be helpful so I don't have to call out the time frame or the chart that I'm on every time. So let's see if this helps us. And also, I have switched EMAs. I have re reverted from the 8 and 21 to the 12 and 26. I've been toggling back and forth for years using 12 and 26 for crypto, and I am making this switch. It's making it more consistent for me, and I really love the four hour 12 and 26 EMA. They're pretty valuable to me. I will never get rid of the 50 ma never say never right so those are just a couple things that i want to point out that are a little different so yesterday we had cpi volatility we had a higher number than we expected we had a big gap down on that news we had this bearish divergence on rsi right here where price made a lower low excuse me rsi made a lower low and price made a higher high we had that bearish divergence play out yesterday had a pretty red day with a great end of day recovery I was watching it from the air, great end of day recovery. And then today we moved up, then we were able to break the prior day high, we came back inside, and then we were able to retest the high of day and then make a new high of day. And this was all led by semis. In the country, we say some something's being led around by the nose. So if you grab an, any animal on the farm, typically by the snout, one that won't bite you, you can kind of make it do whatever you want. Well, I just see, semiconductors just leading the market around by the nose uh, smci nvidia amd they are just telling the market this is what we're going to do now so this morning the market we had semis leading and the market was opening up then semis took a break and then the market pulled down and then the market the semis decided to break back up and then the market followed it back up so right now we have to pay attention to semis i will continue to say the semis are the fuel to the market's engine. And if we look at the heat map today, that's never been clearer. Look at these numbers. And it doesn't have SMCI on it or ARM. It doesn't have doesn't have the smaller names on it. But look, AMD up 4%, NVIDIA up 2.5%. That is a very hard market to short when you have the semis printing green like that. We look at software, it was super green. Communications was green. Consumer discretionary was green. Healthcare look good. Banks look good. Apple was definitely the fly in the ointment for the market bulls. This is not what the bulls wanted to see. Apple was heavy. Let's take a look at the economic events. So tomorrow we have initial jobless claims, the Philadelphia Fed index, and then Friday we have PPI to be aware of. So this morning we saw that strength on semis then semis took a breather we were able to hold the closing price of yesterday which was 49408 and then we resumed higher once the semis caught their air and i want to go show you that direct correlation because we need to watch it tomorrow so this morning we had semis they moved up up and over the prior day high we came back in just inside the prior day high and then quickly reclaimed it that just shows the strength when bulls defend the prior day high and then we closed up near the high of day and if we look at the three of the major participants that were giving great clues arm it closed up five percent now uh, arm has lockup period on march 12th just to be aware of where insiders will be allowed to sell their shares and that could bring some heaviness to arm so be aware of that arm is a great day trading vehicle i definitely wouldn't take it out of my toolbox if you've been trading it nvidia closed up near high of day again it is has been the the second biggest leader well, actually, I have to give credit to AMD today. Let me do that in an accurate fashion. So uh, AMD was up 4%. We have this daily EQ that broke bull on AMD. It was a wonderful leader and indicator of the market today. And SMCI continues to do superhuman feats with the way that it moves. It 
came down, got that 15 minute higher low that we like to look for. I think Dan was the one to point it out today. It ended up being a 30 minute higher low, but just what a beast. And it will have some consolidation. At some point, it'll probably fall 15 to 20%, but where that happens, we don't know. Let's go back up to the indices and see how semis helped QQQ. We are in gap fill territory for Monday's all-time high. And if you think about the psychology of an all-time high, you have everyone, not everyone, but every frustrated bull from last October down here sitting on the sidelines saying, take a break, market, take a break. I want in, I want in, I want in. And it has not given you a break so we have one down day yesterday and all the money that's been sitting on the sidelines saying, hey, I need it to take a break before I can get in long. They bought the dip today. So we have NVIDIA earnings next week, February 21st after hours, and that will be a very important earnings for the market in my opinion. So again, we're in gap fill territory. No major damage has been done on any of these charts. The Russell actually looked the worst for the wear and tear. We had a great day last Thursday, Friday, and Monday was a stellar day. It was up huge. And then yesterday, Russell took it the hardest and had a big down day. And we bounced from the daily 50 MA. And we practically, we came within a nickel of filling that gap. That was quite a recovery. And we had a clue this morning, and I talked about it in pregame and the market open show in our chat room. Bitcoin was our canary. Bitcoin, let's look at it, what it was looking like this morning. So it's 1.45 a.m. I was live right in here. And we had Bitcoin with this huge move up and new high. Bitcoin is considered a risk off asset. So when people are putting money into Bitcoin, it's a riskier asset and they are okay and tolerate the risk. What's well, the same thing with Russell? Russell's a risk off asset. So we're talking about the Russell in here, and it's not breaking the prior day high yet, but I said we could look to Bitcoin as a potential canary that people have an appetite for risk, and that's exactly what happened. So we have the Dow. The Dow closed up very strong, no problems here. And I'd like to point out yesterday I was posting in chat, and you're like, wait, I'm not a TCG member. That doesn't help me. We'll become one. <laughs> so yesterday I was posting in chat from over the Pacific Ocean that we had this two minute stair step going up. When you see VIX do a parabolic move like this, look for stair steps. They can mark great tops and bottoms. And yesterday, this marked a perfect, a wonderful temporary top and we had a 16% drop. And if you'd have just stayed with a two minute chart and that moved down, you would have made 10%. So. If you're trading you VIXI, you'd have made a little more than that. So the VIX yesterday, we had a blow off top and then we had extreme weakness come back in as fear was exiting stage right. I cover Bitcoin. Bitcoin with a huge move up, potential four hour bull flag, no red flags. We had Riot today, of course. Riot was moving hard, again, because we have money managers that can buy and sell Riot and Mara and Coin and MSTR, but they can't buy, potentially can't buy Bitcoin directly. So they they run to the smaller assets and it had a beautiful day. This one will be on back burner watch tomorrow. Looking at the dollar, we have the dollar with a potential hourly bear flag. We are below the EMAs and that is great for market conditions. Not always an inverse correlation. I just like to make note of it. We had XLF clear the prior day high and now we're making a, big, a little push up here in after hours. I don't think we had any bank earnings. I don't know if there's news on any of those names. Looks like Tesla has news. Yeah, Tesla has news. Let me see what that is real quick for us. Elon. Files 13G on Tesla with 20.5% stake. All right, pretty good. That's help, helping Tesla. That could help the market today. My comments on Tesla for the day were, excuse me, let me go back to Tesla. We have a potential daily inverse head and shoulders. I started pointing this out last week for the early pattern rack. 
And now with this positive news, are we over these resistances? 194.12, 194.73, no. We need to get over 194.73 and 196.36 to confirm this daily inverse head and shoulders. This will be a top watch for me tomorrow for day trading vehicle. All right, let's look at gold. Gold has been weak. It did not take advantage of dollar weakness. I have no interest in gold. We have oil setting the two-day lower high. I've been pointing out the top fish setup in oil. So we set that two-day lower high with a pretty big rejection on oil inventory today. So bounces are for shorting now. We can look at reverse back burners on oil. We've been talking about Apple and how weak it is. It has not been able to hold water, as my grandma would say. We are right at the daily 200 MA. I'll have that in my sights tomorrow. Microsoft had a pretty strong close up and over Tuesday's high. Netflix with a strong day. This was uh, one of the names I pointed out in the early market show as having strength in, <clears throat> excuse me, having strength in pre-market and right when we were opening. And that came to fruition today on Netflix. So I hope, t I know it's some TCG members that got that. And the reason I was looking at it was this very clean weekly bull flag, super clean. And we got, we confirmed it today. So nice closed PL for Netflix. PLTR was in my sights today because of the daily chart. We were unable to confirm the daily bull flag. We double topped. This can still be on watch tomorrow. And I would keep Netflix on back burner watch. Tesla, we just discussed, has news. Now I want to read a little bit more about that before I commit to a long, but it looks good. Uber had earnings yesterday, and I believe that they announced some type of dividend. Confirm that for yourself, but they had a bullish day. This is on back burner watch for tomorrow. We talked about semis and their strong close. Arm had a weak close comparatively, so I would definitely stick with SMCI, NVIDIA, and AMD for potential longs. MSOS, there was some ETF news that caused a bounce in the afternoon. We are still looking for that weekly higher low. And I would say we're getting closer than not to setting it. We need to clear 897 in order to increase the probability that that weekly higher low is set. TCNNF. We had a bounce today. It also had the, some type of similar news about the ETF, and I'm looking for that weekly higher low on, on TCNNF and daily higher low. And I wouldn't say that we came closer to setting that yet. I don't have confidence in this move as much as the MSOS, at least it closed green. All right, that is it for your market recap. I, I wanted to show you the arm long we took live. Uh, I took the arm long this morning, a little over six hours ago at 128.47, scaled out there and scaled out there. And then my last one was a stop out at 128, but we closed that trade green. All right, that's it for the market recap. Have a great Valentine's Day and tell somebody you love them. All right, bye y'all. Well, happy Valentine's Day, traders. I've decided to really expose myself today on Valentine's Day and no, not like that. I am going to show y'all my real accent and you'll understand why I say hourly so slow. So in the country, you say anything with an O-W sound like owl, you say it ar, hourly. We would sing there's pyre in the blood, power in the blood. We would sing there's pyre in the blood. And I grew up in a very timber dense area in the middle of Louisiana. And we had fire towers, uh, like every 10 miles, you would have a fire tower that was really tall up. So they would man it and look for fires in the area. And we called those fire towers. So my husband has dared me to do a video with my full accent and full exposure because I have to slow myself down because I talk to my parents every single day. I talk to family members every single day and I still have the accent. It is right there on the surface. So I can tap into it anytime I want. Actually, it's easier for me to speak in my accent. It's very difficult to slow down and enunciate words. So 
The next time I say hourly and I slow myself down, you will know why. Because I want to say hourly. That's the hourly 12 and 26 EMA. And if it's holding those hourly EMAs, you just go with it. Because that's what I really want to say. <laughs> but um, I don't know that anyone would understand me. So there you have it. That's why I say it's so funny. So now you know there's a lot of words that I say funny. And I have to just slow myself down. And I've had to do this for the last... 15 years since I left Louisiana. So thank y'all for bearing with me and happy Valentine's Day. And I love y'all and I love those hourly EMAs.